You know what, let's start it off with someone who has some experience on uh, Photographer's Ignite, and she never fails to let us down. <laughs> Sorry, I built that one up. <laughs> most of you have heard of Tamara Lackey, if you've been in the photo world, uh, most everybody knows Tamara. She is a, a very prolific author, she's an educator, she's a fabulous photographer, she's a mother, she's a wife, she's a, wearing a pretty dress, she's got blonde hair, and she's actually a dear friend of mine, and I'm, I'm always um, surprised at how she can teach and educate and inspire and make people laugh constantly. So. This is not going to be funny at all. She's going to talk about a funeral. No, I'm not, I don't know what she's going to talk about. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. She's going to talk about how to get to know someone in five minutes. So, Tamara Lackey, come on up. I'm not actually having a baby. I wait for this slide to start, right? Okay. Okay. First of all, it's so good to see so many of you that I do know here, like big time. Thank you. Um, it's also good to see a lot of you people I don't know and hopefully we'll meet where we'll exchange factual identifying information, name, where we're from, what we do, blah. At that time, I'm going to get an opportunity to either try to genuinely know you or slip into my autopilot and just do a quick snap assessment. Like, those are my options. You're gonna have the same option when it comes to meeting me. So th that is, of course, if it even registers with you that you met me, because you have a lot of people and experiences vying for your attention, yes? And you only have so much time and mental bandwidth anyway. So we meet people, and as a way of knowing them, what we do is we try to measure them up against a state of constant perfection, right? It's really easy to know someone whose truth doesn't match ours. He votes like so-and-so, and he prays to so-and-so, so yeah, I know that guy. I already have him figured out. Or we hear something about someone, and without knowing anything about the situation, we're all like, oh my God, I would never do the thing that I heard about or read on Facebook. That thing that I have never been in the situation that she's had, the things that she's facing, right? Yes? I'm gonna want your love. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and so what we end up doing is basically we look at people and from my perspective at least, I feel like we take a measure first of their shortcomings, of what they get wrong, of what they do wrong, of what they say wrong. It's like all this reality TV has sunk into our brain and we're all Randy from American Idol like cocking her head and being like, she seems pitchy. <laughs> that, was, that was with a P by the way, keeping it clean. Um, <clears throat> I was warned earlier, <laughs> violently, I've had a couple slips here. So um, where am I? All right, she seems pitchy, but, and this is where it gets really good. We lift the camera to our face, we look through the lens, and our job right there, our whole job at that point is to look for beauty, to find something impactful, to find something compelling, to find something emotional, and we do. Time and time again, we do. We have museums and galleries and websites and books and DVDs and hard drives full of the beauty we found in people we had never met before. But then we put the camera down and what happens? What changes? It wasn't the gear that saw that beauty in people, was it? We get to meet people every day. And the truth about people is that there is a light that exists within all of us. Truly, it's a miracle, miracle of the human spirit, and I don't use that word a lot, that it exists within all of us. And for some, it's so easy to see. It shines. They bring it passionately, profoundly. It is not hard to miss. And for others, I know what a few of you are thinking, you may not have met some of the bleepers I've met, <laughs> right? Well, I have met many, many people through my work and through my travels and <laughs> is the bleep first face. Um, and through my experience of living in a suburb, and I will tell you that I have met your bleepers. I have spent time with your bleepers, and I understand that it's not always so apparent. 
that it can fade sometimes, that light we're talking about, through fatigue and relentless routine and pain, like those sharp hurts that sometimes hit us so hard it feels like everything around us, ourselves included, just goes and stays rather dim. But, but we are born shiny little things, are we not? Yes. Say it again, are we not? Yes. yes. And then what happens after we're born? We radiate as children. I photograph children because it's so easy. They're just radiating this light. We are not meant to give this up or grow out of it or have it ground out of us. Sometimes all we need to reignite us is to have one person, one single, solitary soul stand there and look at us long enough to be able to say, no, nah, that's, that's not all there is to you. If you wanna know someone in the shortest amount of time possible, put down the camera and do what it is that artists are trained to do. Look for the light. Thank you.